does it seem like they bring Pinocchio out around Christmas each year? If you don't know who I'm referring to, it would be the former liar in the press briefing room, Kaylee McEnany, or as I used to call her, Pinocchio McEnany. Because, well, all she did from her first opening statement of making a promise never to lie to anyone in the press briefing room in the White House. She in fact did nothing but lie. And well, she's out again trying to rehabilitate her Pinocchio way of lying. You know, she said, I didn't lie. Before it was just, I didn't lie. And then we made a video about that. And it hasn't even been a year. And we called her out on all the lies that she told. And now, well, she's back with another claim. The same claim, I never lied. Only this time, well, she's padded her defense and padded, well, the claim with some assertions. She said she couldn't be a liar because, well, she attended Harvard, Oxford, Georgetown, and she's a Christian. So we have to dissect all four of those things. But first, let's get to Kaylee McEnany or Pinocchio McEnany. You're like the Grinch. Every Christmas, you come around to disturb us. You gotta be like the Grinch. I'm sorry, like, put the two in comparison together. Look at it closely. Kaylee McEnany and the Grinch. I swear they're the same creature. Every holiday season this Grinch comes up and tries to steal Christmas tries to steal the holiday Hanukkah Kwanzaa he just tries to steal your joy remember the doozy of Donald Trump was never afforded a peaceful transfer of power. And then you see Hillary Clinton the night, the next morning of giving a concession speech. Nobody on January 6th of 2017 stormed any nation's capital trying to attempt to prevent the certification of Donald Trump being president of the United States. Nobody did that. They did that this year. We're not even a year from that incident on January 6th of this year. So don't talk about how there was no peaceful transfer of power when there clearly was. There clearly isn't any more. But that happened because of your rhetoric and your former boss's rhetoric and actions. Actions too. Because actions in this case did speak louder than words. And there were quite a bit of bad actions that were undertaken by that lunatic and fascist. Now, Let's get to the deception. You remember Kayla Ann McEnany, summer of 2020, after George Floyd was publicly lynched in front of the whole world, 
and we watched it. There were protests that turned messy due in large part to the police abusing their citizenry. You know, it's still being discovered now. All of the legal things that happened last year. So many police departments have gotten sued and are settling for huge amounts. In Minneapolis, it came out that there were police doing the protests that were purposefully using non-lethal but harmful chemical agents on the residents who were protesting in Minneapolis because they disagreed with them. They were hunting protesters. That's been proven to be factually correct. Yet Kaylee and McEnany didn't show any of the footage of what the police were doing in Seattle to residents in downtown Capitol Hill. They think that we forgot all of that shit. That a judge, the Independent Police Review Board, and the City Council said that the C SPD used force that was not allowed under the Geneva Convention on their own citizens. And you think that a city who's been under consent decree since 2015, you think that we're supposed to respect SPD? Fuck the police. No. You have to respect us. We pay your taxes. We pay your salary. And we're tired of it. Tired of the abuse. Now, was there some lawlessness that happened? Of course. But we've already established that there was lawlessness on both ends. So Kaylee Ann McEnany was very deceptive in what she decided to choose to select, to show the American people in the press briefing room. The riot in Portland, remember? She said for 57 straight days, those bastards, those liberal fat, those liberal anarchists and socialists, they were protesting for Black Lives Matter. Now the president believes the Black Lives Matter. He believes that sentiment. But you can't protest. Well, wait a minute. I thought enshrined in the Constitution you had a right to peacefully assemble. People were peacefully assembled in most of these protests when the police started firing tear gas. You know, the same police that didn't fire any tear gas at the January 6th insurrectionists who were acting violent, who were a mob, who did storm the nation's capital, who did ransack it, who did all of the things they were complaining about that were happening in local municipalities in major metropolitan cities. They did it to the nation's capital. And not only did they do it, they did it for, well, political reasons. People were protesting in the summer for humanitarian reasons against the state. That white supremacist mob in January 6th was protesting because you didn't rig the system in your favor. You see, they want the system to be completely genocidal. And they thought the system was completely genocidal. But it's not genocidal enough for them. That's why they like Trump. Because he wanted to finish the job. You know, the job that Hitler started. Pathetic. Now let's go to, well, the institutions of higher learning. Let's start with Harvard. Harvard is, well, cream of the crop. Harvard is really a great campus. It's in a local neighborhood. You know, if you've ever been to Boston, I recommend going over to Harvard. And then go to Mike's and get some cannolis. Boston has the absolute best cannolis in the entire world. Go to Boston. And go to Mike's. And get you some cannolis. Harvard. I've been on the campus too of Harvard. 
Remember, we're talking about Pinocchio here. And then we have Georgetown. Now, Georgetown boasts the absolute best and brightest legal minds this nation has perhaps ever seen. Georgetown is known for American law. Lawyers from all across the world revere Georgetown and the institution. You have to have a skill set to be able to debate and argue and share your narrative and perspective in a very persuasive manner. So, Georgetown. I can see that for Kaylee McEnany or Pinocchio McEnany. So Georgetown, I feel like you've picked up the skills. And then Oxford. Now, we're talking about the home of modern Anglo-Saxon history. Oxford has so much history in the institution. The prestige is well uncalculable. You can't calculate the prestige of Oxford. Oh my. So many people from all over the world seek to, well, just be near Oxford. But did you know, Oxford is not like a traditional campus. It's just a set of buildings in a neighborhood, kind of like Harvard. Just there's no rhyme or reason or anything like that. It's kind of difficult to get around the campus. Now, there's some very special places at Oxford, but I think the most sacred of locations at Oxford, and perhaps Pinocchio McEnany would agree with me, is the examination room. Now, I've got Pinocchio McEnany in the examination room, and I really only have one question for the Christian Pinocchio McEnany. You know, the Georgetown, Harvard, Oxford, I can't be a liar if I did all of that, and plus I'm a Christian, you know, the Grinch. I have one question. It's just the two of us in the examination room. Nobody's coming in. It's completely dark. You don't even see me. I don't see you. You just hear my voice. I have one question. Was it hope or listen? And did you do anything to assist Stephanie in that situation? Remember, you can't lie because you went to Georgetown. You went to Harvard. You were in the examination room in Oxford. Was it Alyssa or Hope? And did you assist Stephanie? Simple question. But I would imagine for Pinocchio, the nose is going to go very long with the answer. <laughs>